So if you've been watching YouTube for any length of time, you will probably have noticed that unboxing videos have become reasonably popular. And you know me, I'm not one to stay off the bandwagon for long, so I thought I might join in the fray. That being said, now I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of unboxing videos. Basically, it involves a YouTuber who will then uh, take a product, for example, the Loot Crate, the 1UP box, or maybe the latest piece of gaming hardware, um, take a box of it, and then open the box and demonstrate said products or uh, devices to the YouTube audience and the world and for all to see, or whoever cares to pass by. Uh, but I'm not going to be unboxing a Loot Crate or a 1UP box or whatever. Today I'm going to be unboxing a World War II respirator. Now I recently came across this and thought that it might be worthwhile to do a video on it, um, if not for the sake of remembrance and history, if for no other reason. Um, so, um, a little bit of background. Um, these World War II respirators were given to every civilian who lived in the UK uh, to protect from... Uh, toxic gas attacks um, from invading forces. This was a very, very real fear at the time, and it is certainly pause for thought to think that um, at one point the government actually issued this last line of defence to every single person, knowing that they could very well end up using it, and it certainly has hit home to me that it, it certainly harkens of a much, much more uh, serious time if nothing else. So the box itself is like it looks like a pretty plain cardboard box Although the first thing that you do sort of notice is that the cardboard is substantially thicker It's not corrugated or anything like that. It's just like you can tell that it's a good quality um, Cardboard box. I know it's a bit of a strange thing to say But this has lasted for a long long time and it's in perfect working order even though uh, you can see that there are little holes here on the side of the box where you'd put a string through it so that people could carry it around their necks and, and, and sort of over their shoulder and all that kind of thing. And if you look at any World War II films, you will, or World War II civilian film, as in films of civilians during World War II, you will see people um, carry around these little boxes and this is what's in them. Um, or what I'm about to present to you is uh, what's in them. Now, this is one of the most common historical artifacts around, actually. I mean, they were issued to everyone. Um, so this isn't a particularly uh, unique demonstration or a unique piece of gear or a valuable piece of gear or anything like that. And I think it's because it's so common that it is worth um, acknowledging the importance of that in and of itself, that fact in and of itself. Um, you know, this isn't history being written by a few elite kings and princes. This is history being uh, sort of written and taken... Uh, sort of and having everyone be an involved part of it so that's worth um, sort of understanding I guess so uh, when you open up the box initially it doesn't sort of turn into anything fancy like the loot crate box does but it does have instructions on the lid which you can always respect because instructions often get lost especially when things are moved around a, a lot and it says here I'll put it uh, up there and feel free to pause it if you want a sort of good read but I'm going to just read it out to you now. Packaging of a respirator. The respirator should be placed in box with the heavy end, in brackets container, standing on bottom of box. The transparent eyepiece should lie evenly on the top of container and at full length without any deformation. When respirator is required for use, one, hold respirator by the straps. Two, put on, uh, put on by first putting chin into the face piece and then draw the straps over the head. Adjust the straps to obtain close but comfortable fit. Three, take off by pulling the straps over the head from the back. And there's a warning at the bottom that says, do not take respirator off by pulling the container upwards over the face. So, the instructions there, pretty much straightforward and, and uh, self well, not self-explanatory, explanatory. Um, and then you open it up, and you've got a little, um, this is what uh, sort of comes as. So you've got a little bit of uh, cardboard there holding holding the uh, respirator piece. Uh, is it the rest, what's it called? The, sort of the, 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 the front bit in place. And this is it. This is uh, the World War II respirator. There's a few numbers on the front there that basically um, are its serial number or its batch number and I don't know what Clyde 639 is but I would imagine that's sort of um, its number within the batch I can only guess and then you've got just like a plastic eyepiece if this is like a very latexy rubbery type of substance here 
and you've got straps on the back. This front here, now I'm not going to be wearing this mask for one very, very, very important reason, reason and that's basically how this works is, is that there's a block of asbestos in here that's perforated. So you actually breathe air through asbestos. Uh, and the idea is that the asbestos would then absorb the, the toxic gas. Um, that being said, though, this was before the days when we actually realised how poisonous asbestos was to you. Um, and and uh, obviously now we know that. Um, would never have used asbestos for these masks. So that is a World War II civilian respirator. A little bit more interesting than what you might find inside of a loot crate. Especially if you're interested in, in any kind of history. At least modern history. So... Um, thanks very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Let me know if you've got any stories to share or anything like that. And um, that's about it from me. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.